Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. Let us observe management of this intumescent cataract. This is a totally unedited recording. This is the main incision with a 3 millimeter steel keratome. A side port is made on the left side of the main incision about 3 clock hours away. An air bubble is injected into the anterior chamber. Tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule underneath this air bubble. Little bit of adrenaline is injected into the anterior chamber to maintain dilatation of the pupil. Excess dye is washed out with a 23G Simcoe cannula. The anterior chamber is now filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. A uterata forceps is taken with the tip of the uterata forceps. The center of the anterior capsule is punctured and a small rexis, a mini rexis is done. The 23G Simco cannula is taken again and some loose cortical matter is aspirated to decrease the intralenticular pressure. Friends, we must remember that cause of rexis runout is high intralenticular pressure and we must decrease the intralenticular pressure by aspirating some loose cortical matter and the cortical matter from all around is removed rotating the nucleus and now we have to enlarge this small rexus anterior chamber is filled up again with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. A nick is made at the margin of the mini rexis. The uterata forceps is taken again and the small rexis is enlarged in this way. So if we can do this, we can do a very nice surgery in intumescent cataracts. Size of this rexis is about 5.5 to 5.75 millimeter. We will see that after implantation of the intraocular lens. And now watch nucleus management. The cataract is not very hard. We can say this is grade 3 nucleus. It is not brown. It is not very hard. But it, we can hold it very nicely with vacuum. So we hold the nucleus with vacuum. We bury the tip, occlude the tip, and hold the nucleus firmly and chop it and emulsify the pieces. We use 70% ultrasonic energy, 48 ml per minute flow rate, and 480 millimeter of mercury vacuum to chop the nucleus into pieces and emulsify the pieces. 
during emulsification of this last piece i decrease the vacuum to 400 flow rate is reduced to 40 and the last piece is emulsified so the nucleus is nicely managed there is some cortical lens matter sticking to the anterior capsular rim and some cortical matter is there at the equator in some places I take the 23G Simco again and remove the cortex we can use anything for this we can use bimanual irrigation aspiration, coaxial irrigation aspiration or more safer device that is up to the surgeon. If a surgeon wants to do a perfect surgery, we must appreciate that. And now is the time to implant an intraocular lens. I am using a B cartridge so I want to enlarge the main wound little bit say by 0 0.1 mm so that we can engage the cartridge easily in the wound remember that it is not good to stress the wound just a fraction of a millimeter increase is better than stressing the wound too much. The lens has been placed in the capsular bag. Now see this. The optic of the intraocular lens is overlapped by the anterior capsular rim. A thin rim of anterior capsule is overlapping the optic of the intraocular lens. This means the size of the rexis is about 5.75 or 5 between 5.5 to 5.75 millimeter. The antechamber is nicely formed. Integrity of the wounds are checked. Few drops of moxie is applied over the cornea and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve the mankind with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.